Welcome to tonight's forum for the candidates for Stoughton Mayor. My name is Brooke Soltwet, and I'm with the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'll be your moderator this evening. Tonight's forum is sponsored by three organizations. A representative of each organization will provide a two-minute overview of their work. We'll begin with Teresa Pellet. She is project coordinator for the Stoughton Wellness Coalition. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome, and we're happy to be co-sponsoring tonight. Uh, the Stoughton Wellness Coalition is a community-wide uh, partnership that promotes health and wellness outcomes across the community. Currently have a primary focus on youth substance prevention through um, a grant funded from the CDC called Drug-Free Communities. Uh, we do most of our work through community education and awareness, but we also work heavily on building skills with youth and professionals and adults in the community, as well as policy work to prevent underage substance use. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, next, we have Roger Springman, who is Vice President of Sustainable Stoughton. Thank you. Uh, good evening. As uh, Brooke said, my name is Roger Springman. I'm one of the co-founders of Sustainable Stoughton. And I'd like to just give you a few minutes of uh, lessons about what we've done over the last number of years. Um, we began thinking about the need for sustainability in 2013-14. And by 2016, we became a 501c3 and uh, then went on to do the many things we've done since then. And our main educational function is education and outreach. And uh, I'd like to speak to that momentarily. But first, what is sustainability? Sustainability looks at the actions needed to consider the long-term wise use of our human, environmental, and economic resources. So that's our primary reason for being. And in summary, what we've done over the last number of years then, we were very active until, guess what, COVID hit. And since then, we've taken a bit of a, a buy on recent activities. But until then, we did a number of great things. <coughs> we did Earth Day Expo. We had two at the La Jurette and one at uh, Chorus House. And we also did Green Thursdays and did things like Backyard Bees, uh, Backyard Gardens. Uh, we did work on the Ahara River water quality effort. Uh, Native Pollinators was one of our workshops. So quite a number of workshops. And uh, finally, just as a summary, what we are doing right now is trying to uh, look to the future. And so we are actively interested in uh, moving forward this spring and summer. And if you're interested in joining us or following us, we'd have, have you go to our Facebook page and uh, like us and go from there for the spring and summer's activities and events. Thank you for attending this mayoral forum this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Springman. And I'd also like to introduce um, um, Regina Hirsch, who is also from uh, the Sustainable Stoughton, and she will be working on collating the questions from the audience for that organization. And our third sponsor is Stoughton Courier Hub, and with us tonight is Tara Jones, the managing editor. Yes, hi, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we're very excited to be involved in this. Um, again, this is kind of right at one of the pillars of what we do in the community is to provide um, all of the facts, all of the information in an unbiased form, just like we're looking to do here. Um, so again, we will be uh, doing some coverage and some recap, um, just a little bit about us. We are a weekly print newspaper. As most of you know, I'm sure we come out on Thursdays. Um, but also, I was um, brought in to really kind of start boosting our digital presence as well. Um, so that's something, you know, go to StoughtonNews.com. Um, you'll be noticing we've got a lot of really great projects going on. Um, we're working on kind of figuring out um, how we can better cover this community when it comes to news, government, business, things to do, schools and sports. Um, so yeah, we're really excited to be a part of this. And um, again, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and be sure to check out online. We've got a lot of new projects coming. Thank you, Tara. Uh, so I want to thank the sponsoring organizations for um, organizing this forum and giving our, uh, your voters an opportunity to learn more about the candidates. On April 5th, Stoughton voters will choose between two candidates for mayor, incumbent Tim Swadley and challenger Sharon Mason Borsma. Each candidate will give a two minute opening statement. Then the question period will begin with questions that were prepared by the forum sponsors and sent to the candidates in advance. Written questions from the audience will also be accepted. For those attending in person, please write your question on one of the cards provided on the table and they'll be collected throughout the forum. 
For those attending via Zoom, pose your questions in the chat, please. The questions should be issue-based. Personal or political attacks will not be read. All questions will be addressed to both candidates, and each will have two minutes to respond, alternating which candidate responds first. And then finally, each candidate will make a two-minute closing statement. Our timekeeper tonight is Deb Piper. Throughout the evening, she will raise a yellow card when a candidate has 30 seconds left to speak, and a red card when time is up. I will interrupt a candidate who does not observe the time limit. For the audience, please hold your applause until the end of the forum. And I'm going to ask one more time for everyone in the room to please check that your cell phones have been silenced or are turned off. Thank you. All right, earlier this evening, we drew names uh, out of a cup uh, to determine which candidate would begin first. And so Ms. Mason Borsma will please give your first, uh, the two, your, bleh. Please give your two-minute opening statement first. Thank you very much. My name is Sharon Mason Borsma, and I want to be your mayor of Stoughton. I want to make Stoughton the best place to live in, to work at, and to visit for the state of Wisconsin. I grew up a little bit about myself in the state of Michigan. I was born and raised on a farm community outside of Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I decided to go to college in the inner city of Detroit. I knew no one at the time, but I decided to go to Wayne State University in the inner city of Detroit, and I lived there for about five to six years uh, before moving on to another town. What I learned at Wayne State was invaluable. It was the best experience of my life. I looked at the poverty, I looked at the homelessness, I looked at the people who were challenged by um, not finding employment, and racial disparity. So in that regard, again, with my experience at Wayne State, I majored in urban sociology and in the field of social work. I decided that what was really promoting me to do that was what I saw regarding grassroots organizations they were able to continue to improve the quality of life for the people that I saw. So given that, that it was the best experience of my life, I never lost the interest of how cities tick and what makes them grow and what makes them improve. So moving to Wisconsin, I graduated with a master's degree in the field of social work. I also found my first affordable home in Stoughton. And I, for 30 years, I worked for county government and learned how government works. I also am a leader for coordinating meetings with communities, supervising university interns, and was a community social worker for 17 years. We also raised two children, have now five grandchildren. I volunteer currently for about 10 organizations, again, in a leadership role. And I have received awards in, for that role. Thank you very much. Mr. Swadley. I would like to thank the League of Women Voters, the Stoughton Courier Hub, and Sustainable Stoughton, and the Stoughton Wellness Coalition for sponsoring tonight's event. Four years ago, I was encouraged to run for mayor by citizens. They believed I had the vision, experience, and leadership to move Stoughton forward. I agreed to run because of my commitment to give back to the community, a community that allowed my wife and I to build our first home through a sweat equity program similar to Habitat for Humanity. I know firsthand the importance of workforce housing. We raised our family in a safe environment, started the successful business, and we watch our grandchildren grow. I'm seeking another term to build on the successes of our amazing city staff, the city council, the generous community, and my commitment to give back to Stoughton. Prior to becoming mayor in 2018, I served 14 years on seven on the school board and seven on the city council. I've served on the board of directors for the Stoughton Area Youth Center, the Mant Center, and currently on the Innovation Center. I regularly attend other board meetings. This experience has helped me to hit the ground running. In my professional career, I have 40 plus years in management positions. This experience includes preparing budgets, human resources, training, and operation. I hold a real estate license for seven years and most recently, I was sales and inventory and impl implementation specialist. I created efficiencies for manufacturing companies in Wisconsin, Illinois, and the UP. We have owned and operated Pizza Pit in Stoughton through the Great Recession, COVID, and will celebrate our 20th anniversary next year. 
I understand the challenges of running a business because I've done it. As mayor, I've served as the city's manager as well as the economic development director. I ran for mayor four years ago on five basic principles, open and transparent government, running efficient city services, fiscally responsible budgets, smart and strategic growth, and collaborated solutions. Thank you very much. Our first question goes to you, and Ms. Mason Borsma. Uh, the average age of a Stoughton resident is 41. What could the city of Stoughton do, or continue to do, to promote itself as a place for young families to live and work? What I would recommend would be more resources for higher education, quality schools, housing affordable for everyone, employment opportunities, and recreational opportunities. Let me pick that apart to talk about number one, higher education. Currently, right now, I have connected with Madison College to see if they can set up a satellite office in the city of Stoughton. And that would be a satellite office for people learning trades, healthcare, law enforcement, academy, and other options. I think that's important for accessibility and for local uh, higher learning and our jobs. I would also increase retail establishments of goods and services to increase jobs and also market those jobs and what they are available on a central Stoughton-based website through social media. For housing, I would do something similar that our neighboring community of Oregon did recently, and they did a survey. They wanted to know how many people were employed in Stoughton or also um, we, uh, did a had a certain income range and how many live in that area in Oregon. So looking at those two components, I think we need to do the same. Do we know how many people actually live here and are employed here? Currently, they found that a lot of people couldn't afford to live in Oregon, so therefore they are currently building three large housing developments. So I think we need to know what we need for housing that is affordable. I mentioned quality schools. I think we need to have maintain excellent curriculum, and I think and I would encourage parents and caregivers to get involved in city leaders in the school in their learning process, and recreational opportunities for all ages is paratarif. I would I recommend long-term sustainable resources for those events, such as an aquatic center, a children's museum, and let's not forget the Stoughton Fair that is a family event for everyone. Thank you very much. Mr. Swadley. As mayor of the last four years, I've focused on areas to provide opportunities for young families to consider moving to Stoughton. Young people want things to do in a safe, diversified, and sustainable environment. We've created strategies to keep young people engaged. And here are some ex examples of the improvements we've made in the last four years. We have 100% lead-free water in the city of Stoughton. We've improved our roads. We have fiber optics citywide. We've increased technology and social media, utilizing a uh, Facebook account for the city of Stoughton, virtual and now hybrid meetings. We have a vibrant downtown. We've added pedestrian lights for safety. We've done work to make the sidewalks and the crosswalks safe. We've added parking signs and uh, wayfinding signs as well. We've upgraded our parks and trails. We have an inclusive park at Nordic Ridge Park. We added a zip line feature at Lowell Park, Pickleball at Mant Park, Prairie at Bjorn Park. All of these parks, we've been doing ADA accessible upgrades during this process. We've moved out of the Opera House into the new city hall that was donated, and we've done improvements at the Opera House to better the experience for people that want to, want to come to Stoughton and also provide a revenue source to stop the Opera House uh, didn't have before. We've approved the River Park, which will attract people to come to Stoughton. We've approved outdoor dining for people that want to dine on Main Street. We've in increased our summer events, the Catfish River Festival. We've brought back fireworks, and we've had the Taste of Stoughton. We've formed a business and a developer group to, uh, to initiate more amenities. We've done a strategic plan with the Chamber of Commerce to get them more involved in our growth. More housing opportunities will be available at multiple price points so everybody can afford to live in Stoughton. Thank you very much. All right, I'll, we'll be staying with you for the next question. Both candidates have stated their support for smart growth. 
What is your definition of smart growth? And what do you see as the role of Stoughton's comprehensive plan in working with surrounding townships that are seeking to preserve the rural aspects of the area? As mayor, what actions will you take with neighboring communities to promote smart growth? I define and I have demonstrated smart growth through the project the City Council has approved and will be considering. I assume the role of the economic development person because we didn't have one. And working with the City Council and my team, we've accomplished many things. We reviewed the comprehensive plan and we set some goals and objectives and we met them. We work with the townships. I was with the town of Dunkirk today uh, uh, with the executive Parisi, who is one of my supporters, viewing the site, um, talking to the farmers. Uh, last night I was with the town of Rutland, thanking them for providing access for one of our developments so we could run a water line to connect uh, Kettle Park West and 51 West developments to provide housing opportunities that I talked about. We've been encouraging uh, smaller lots for higher, de uh, higher density more diversified housing mix. We have the Habitat for Humanity project, which I helped initiate. We have workforce housing coming to the west side of 51 West. <clears throat> we work with city staff in a collaborative manner to make sure that any city services can be done efficiently. Examples of that are eliminating dead ends in the developments that we're gonna be doing in the future, making sure that police, fire, and EMS have efficient ways to get in and out of the subdivisions as well as public works for plowing the snows. As I mentioned, we have ADA accessibility in our parks. We require parkland in, instead of money in lieu of parkland, which we did in the past. We use natural features in our parks, such as wetlands. If you go downtown, you'll see all of our buildings are virtually full right now. We've filled vacant buildings throughout the city at the Starbucks, the Pizza Hut, uh, Pumpkin Patch, the Learning Tree, and the movie theater, which is now Marchand's. We have multiple infill projects as you drive around the city and two major projects, the Redevelopment Authority put together on the Marathon site and the Riverfront Development are under contract. So things are getting Thank done you. and uh, Thank thanks you. to our staff. Ms. Mason Forsma. Yes, I'd like to define the definition. I'd like to talk about the definition of smart growth. Is it, a, it is a planned economic and community develop, development to curb urban sprawl and environmental conditions. What is a comprehensive plan? A comprehensive plan is a valuable tool to use in learning the details of long-term vision for communities and achievements. Stoughton's plan was compiled in 2017. The Wisconsin law states that you can compile it every 20 or update it every 10 years. But the townships compile their comprehensive plan every 20 years. Recently, I visited all four townships and I was introduced uh, to the chairpersons and some of the board members in the last month and a half. And I would encourage the township board and the civic government representatives to work together to discuss their comprehensive uh, plans about smart growth and future development. Conversations would be mutually agreed upon for controlled commercial development located near municipal, municipal services for an increased tax base to preserve the rural aspect of the land. Developers, city government, and township reps would work together to grow the land for development following those comprehensive plans for the city and for the townships. Thank you. And you get the next question as well. The Yahara River is an integral part of our community and environment. What are your views on the proposed development of the Yahara River project and the science behind river and riparian restoration and current dam removal? Thank you. The Yahara River is 62 miles long. It starts in DeForest, it flows through Madison, it comes down to Stoughton, it flows into the Rock River. There are two projects that are being planned right now for the city government. One is the riverfront development, the other is the dam removal whitewater park build. Let's talk about the riverfront development first. It's a wonderful idea to capture the beauty of the river with opportunities for recreation, such as uh, what they want to build would be apartments. I'd like to see them owned, restaurants, retail shops, and green space, a clubhouse, and a river path. But let's also go back to what is smart growth. 
How do we build and develop this area without encountering environmental hazards? Well, that's what happened a few weeks ago. Kurt Brink, the developer, did, uh, with his staff, did find a contaminant in that area of the riverfront development. And remember, Mill Fab now torn down, Stoughton Trailer still exists, and Uniroyal are right in the vicinity of the Ahara River. My question is, what contaminants that they found and other contaminants, contaminants exist? City government leaders and developers need to work together for safety of environmental hazards. I'd like to talk about the dam removal and the Whitewater Park. I feel I'm opposed to this project, but I also feel this is the same concern. Remove the large Stoughton Dam that was restored in 2009 for a cost of $550,000, and what do we find? Do we find contaminants? Do we find water level um, concerns, lower water level concerns, and do we find flood control? So far, the city says they spent $11,400 on this project. I had a CPA look at it on his own, and he said, They've spent around $174,000 from 2017 to 12 2021 Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Swadley. City staff has done their due diligence in the last five years regarding the Yahara River project. There were over 135 public meetings, some with riparian property owners, the townships, as well as uh, public meetings at the Opera House and the high school. A citizen-based ad hoc committee was formed and conducted and ultimately came with a recommendation um, to move the, the concept forward to Park and Recreation Committee, ultimately to the City Council, where it was approved on August 24th on a 10 to 1 vote. The decision was made after addressing multiple concerns, um, and I'll just list some of them. The first one is, is the, the park design is safer without the dam. Removing the dam improves the ecosystem in the water. We'll have minimal effects on the water level based on the feedback that we heard from people upstream. We created a third design <coughs> to address that. It retains the annual canoe race with the enhanced ending. It improves the trail system. It caps the contamination in the pond. It increases parkland and green space, improves fishing, reduces the long-term uh, maintenance costs to the dam, as well as the annual operating costs. It'll allow the dogs upstream in the dog park to swim more often because the water won't be green as it is uh, right now. It'll increase property values and provide customers for our downtown businesses. This project is being built uh, utilizing grants that we've received. So far, we've received over $2 million worth of grants and we're still uh, applying for more as well. Some of the businesses downtown are already remodeling and installing Airbnbs in anticipation of the water park being done. This is going to be a project that will not only benefit the river, but it will benefit the community as a whole and make Stoughton a place of destination. Thank you. And it's your turn again. Sustainability generally is described as a three-legged stool supported by economic, social, and environmental legs. What do you think Stoughton is doing well in those three areas? And what does Stoughton need to improve on? And what will you do as mayor to move those three areas forward to ensure Stoughton's sustainability? Well, thank you for the question because I've already done some of the things to move forward. Under my leadership, we partnered with six other communities to do an energy assessment grant. I attended and participated in all the meetings and Stoughton has been setting the example here in Dane County. Some of the things that we've done is we've started an e-waste pickup and a tree cycle program. We've purchased hybrid vehicles in our police department and an electric motorcycle. We're forming a sustainability committee. We've had about a half a dozen meetings right now and ultimately there'll be a plan that'll come out of there that will help educate the community and help um, educate city staff on how we can better use our resources. In the last budget, the city council approved uh, purchasing renewable energy block grants. We have solar panels on our new public works buildings. We have LED, LED lights citywide, including the downtown, which we did in the last couple years. As I mentioned, we have lead-free water pipes throughout the city of Stoughton. We've been educating our public through our social media posts 
uh, some of the presentations that we've had at the Sustainability Committee and some that citizen members have uh, put together for us. We installed the electric charging station at City Hall and we have a Prairie Restoration Task Force. So I think we're well on our way to um, accept the challenge of having uh, economic, social, and environmental legs uh, dealt with. We still have a long ways to go, but we certainly have you know, a, a citizen-based committee in place with experts on the topics of sustainability, experts that not all city staff have that they can bring to the table, share their experience, share their expertise, and at the end of the day, I think we're going to have an excellent plan. Thank you. Ms. Mason Borsma, your ideas. Before you start, can you not talk so much oh. into the mic? Uh, the sure. people online can't hear you well. Oh, is this better? Yes. Okay, thanks. Alarmingly, Stoughton grew as a city only 4.94% in the last 10 years, comparable to Belleville, Marshall, much smaller communities even though Dane County was the fastest growing county in the state of Wisconsin. Our neighboring communities grew 10 to 26 percent. Why did Stoughton grow so slow? Well, early in the years 2000, we put restrictions on our land development so developers could not grow the city, worried about urban sprawl. We have paid the price for this. We have plummeted in our numbers and our school population, impacting our tax base, besides lack of housing. I would try to make it easier for developers to come to the table to look at housing policies and ordinances that might need revision. It's been known that Stoughton can take too long for decision making on development to be made. Developers go elsewhere. I would also focus on the east side of Stoughton for development to balance the retail west side area. We have a gem of a downtown, but let's continue to make it shine. I would support the current downtown businesses to help them create a merchants association, which I'm now doing, to receive for the businesses to receive mentorship for those new businesses that come up. More events would be planned for all ages, but the quaintness and historic nature would remain the same. And we would market, market, market this, because our downtown does need to be marketed more about what's going on and, again, events for all ages. I would also look to have the city government encourage industry and commercial development for our area, which is all part of growth. I would make sure that, uh, that we need to adhere to codes, as we talked about in question three, to environmental safety regulations for current industries as well as new developments for the safety of everyone. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you get the next question. Current data shows climate change is happening much faster than in earlier predictions. Please provide specific examples of actions you will take as mayor to help our community be resilient to and mitigate the negative effects of climate change. Thank you. I would like to bring back the term sustainability. What will help sustain a safe environment to live in, to work in, and for recreation? The effects of climate change, as we have seen, are on our river levels, as my husband and I saw in Manchester, Iowa, last summer, where the river's levels are low from climate change uh, at a whitewater park. Solar energy should be prominent for housing development for the infrastructure of the city. I talked with the director of Stoughton Utilities recently, and she said that residents are more frequently working with their company for options of solar energy, also housing developers. Housing for elderly, for the general population, should have more accessibilities for sidewalks and getting to areas of retail goods and services. Incentives should be made for planting more shaded trees, residential gardens, rain devices for water usage. Support should be made to shop locally at farmers markets, and we have two in our town. Since rural communities lack transportation, public transportation, and I'm the president of the Affordable Transportation Program to make that more accessible, I would promote a survey to be done to see what we can do to access more transportation, public transportation, and less use of our cars or vehicles. I think there should be more electric charging stations could be installed within our city, and there also could be the notion or the idea of pedal-powered bikes could be used for picking up and dropping off at docking stations. More bike trails would be developed for getting to and from employment and recreation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Swadley. What we've been doing to address the climate change is we've been raising our standards 
the last development that we had approved through the Capital Area Regional Planning Commission was the 51 West project. And we were told when we met with the CARPC, as they're called, that that was the highest standard that they had ever reviewed in the housing development. We made sure that we worked with the developer to develop that um, for the 200-year flood. As I mentioned earlier, the Sustainability Committee will be working on the plan. Um, many of the things that my opponent is talking about will be in the plan. We've already begun that work. We'll continue to collaborate with other communities looking for partnerships on grants as well as uh, initiatives and incentives that we can uh, incorporate with our developments. We'll continue to provide public education uh, from the city as well as Stoughton Utilities. We've established design standards for our retention and detention basins. One thing we really need to address is we need to be able to have the people that want to live here work here. Right now, 6,000 people every day leave Stoughton to go work to go to their jobs and another 6,000 people come to Stoughton and work. Many of the people that live here <coughs> don't work in Stoughton and many of the people that live here, you know, can't afford, um, you know, many people that work here can't afford to live in Stoughton. We have many people coming up here from Rock County to work. We certainly uh, welcome them to be here. So one of the things we've been doing is we've been focusing on bringing more uh, manufacturing to Stoughton. Zinc Power is an example, 110,000 square foot building that went out next to Stoughton Trailer, which is going to, you know, develop in many jobs, up to 100 jobs at that facility. Uh, Monday night, we're going to be looking at a, uh, a concept plan for a business out in our business park that could bring up to another 170 jobs at Stoughton in the manufacturing area. Thank you. Mr. Swadley. What are your views on the current issues regarding diversity, equity, and inclusion, or DEI, in the Stoughton community? And how do you plan to address them? Uh, here's another area that we've already begun to address. The City Council approved the formation of a diversity, equity, and inclusion task force. Uh, they haven't been fully assembled yet. We're still recruiting. So anybody that's watching this uh, tonight can certainly uh, notify me and we can get you signed up. One of the big things for me is financial equity. When I came to Stoughton, quite frankly, you know, I, I didn't have a lot of money. I was poor. I lived on a rough neighborhood in the city of Madison and, you know, I was fortunate enough to have an opportunity to build a house here in Stoughton and, and begin to get some financial equity. That's one of the pl starting places that um, you know, motivates me to do more and give back to the community. The Habitat for Humanity project is, is an example of that. The workforce housing we'll do out of 51 West is another. The developers that we're working with, we're trying to encourage them to do more affordable housing projects. The problem is, is the cost of materials and labor continues to climb faster than wages. So therefore, we need to have higher paying jobs here in Stoughton. We've set up a first time home buyers um, down payment assistance program that we're hoping to implement here in the next year. Uh, you know, we need to educate and understand people about diversity, equity, and inclusion. I personally participated in the Juneteenth, Juneteenth event. I also issued a proclamation after the George Floyd murder, attended multiple meetings with the school district in Mosaicos. The city hosted two listening sessions on this topic. I attended the downtown rally that occurred in Stoughton, and I was asked to come on stage and speak. We reviewed all of our hiring training policies and posted them on our website, as well as our excessive force policy from our police department. And we're looking to expand on all the things that we've already done in order to be able to make Stoughton a more welcoming community. Thank you. Ms. Mason Borsma. Well, I am pleased this topic is being addressed in our community. As a retired social worker that worked in the field for over 30 years, I lived in the inner city of Detroit, as I shared with you tonight, for six years. And I learned firsthand that everyone deserves equality, validation, and to be treated fairly. Ways to address this and maintain this starts at a young age. I would work with school leaders to make sure that we review the curriculum in schools that is taught and shown at our local library to assure us that we have tools to promote fairness and equality amongst all populations. I would also like to see focus groups and discussions in our community to help learn from each other 
what is fairness, equality, and respect for all cultures. I would promote more cult multicultural events to be held in our town, to bring awareness with each other, to have fun, and to celebrate our cultures. My volunteerism and work experience has provided this type of activity and action. I helped to organize a multicultural event several years ago with Mayor Donna Olson. We got food kiosks here from other cultures, different, different places in Madison. A variety of bands played, and there was dancing to music in the streets, representing a lot of cultures. I also helped transition in 1999 the Kosovar Albanian population, 133 people, to come to Stoughton, to settle in Stoughton. I helped with their housing. I helped with getting them employment, medical services, school enrollment, and employment um, I mentioned before. Currently, I'm on a subcommittee to help the Stoughton Refugee Resettlement Assistant Program recruit local volunteers, funds, and other support to transition possibly to Stoughton and to settle here as refugees through Lutheran Social Services. I advocate and work hard when people have been treated unfairly, and this could be pertaining to challenges in housing, employment, and other experiences to see what we can do. It's the right thing to do. Thank you. The next question. During the last compliance checks done by the Stoughton Police Department, over 25% of retailers were found to be selling alcohol to minors. What policy changes are needed in Stoughton to prevent Stoughton youth from accessing alcohol and tobacco products? Well, for almost 20 years, I've been a member of the Stoughton Cares and Deerfield Cares, which is a coalition that works to prevent youth from using illegal drugs and alcohol. I've learned a lot about prevention and about best practices. I would review the ordinance of the, of the city and ask, do they adhere to best practices and prevention of this issue? If not, how can, they, how can those ordinances be revised or changed? I would encourage youth, parents, retailers, city leaders, law enforcement, school personnel, and other community members to learn specifically what best practices are and how they can be applied and enforced. I would ask the retailers to ask for identification when youth try to buy alcohol or tobacco products. Is that always being done? Is their proof of age always asked? What happens if they are underaged? Unidentified representatives sometimes do compliance checks. I would check to see if those are done routinely. Are bartenders up to date on their bartender's licenses? Does Stoughton adhere to the recommended number of bars or establishments that sell or serve alcohol as a mapped out in best practices for a city of its size? My big recommendation, however, is to start at a young age for youth to learn values that help maintain a drug-free kid. I brought this tonight, and any of you can have a copy. We gave this out to the students in the Stoughton school system a number of years ago, and this really describes how parents and caregivers can work for a drug-free kid. And so anyhow, I, I hope that we could adhere to some of those practices. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Swadley. Sure. I've attended and actively participate with the Wellness Coalition. And, you know, together we are forming an alcohol policy committee to address these issues. We need to educate minors and parents. And we need to educate lo local establishments. We've minimized the C store's abilities to sell liquor. We encourage use of the ID scanners, which the Stoughton Wellness Coalition has been able to um, They've been able to uh, loan out for events and for establishments that are having difficulty. And we do need to educate on best practices. And we have to have the ability to hold the establishments accountable. And that's been a real problem because there was change in state law that really uh, prohibited us from holding a bar owner accountable. We can hold the bartender accountable by issuing them a citation but we can't hold the, the bar owner accountable, so we've been working to change our ordinances to give them more teeth. But part of the problem is, is we're dealing against the big lobby, and the big lobby is the Tavern League. And that's been a problem for us. And it's not only a problem for Stoughton, but it's a problem for the entire state of Wisconsin. So what we'll continue to do moving forward is form our committee. Our committee will come up with some strategies. They'll be working with other communities in order to bring us a plan that we can implement and hopefully, you know, address this issue. The Wellness Coalition does work act actively with the school district. 
They do surveys not only on alcohol, but on vaping and opioid and other drug abuse. And I support the work that they've done, and I continue to look forward to the work that they'll be doing in coordination with the Alcohol Policy Committee. Thank you. Given that 50% of health outcomes are linked to social determinants of health, what is your plan to address the lack of affordable housing, food inequality, and minimal public transportation options in Stoughton? Well, as I mentioned earlier, we've already begun to address the, the housing issue, and that's through Habitat for Humanity. We're going to have eight units. And as I mentioned, I, I helped to, you know, not only find the land to build the units, but I connected the landowner to Habitat so they could broker the deal. Uh, the City Council showed great leadership on the 51 West development to include a 70 some unit workforce housing on the west side of that project. We look for opportunities in all the new developments for workforce housing. Unfortunately, not all of them um, can be accomplished. And there's barriers that you know can stop us from doing that, from covenants that have been put into place to financial restraints, especially in a tax in incremental finance district. We've utilized um, tax incremental finance incentives in order to be able to provide the first time um, whole buyers down payment assistance program. We have great resources here in Stoughton for people that are in need. We have START, we have the Senior Center, we have the Youth Center. Um, I personally, with, through our business, have supported many of these organizations over the years. We've expanded our services at the food pantry. They now offer twice a month uh, availability for food pickup as well as delivery. They've, uh, they've added equipment uh, into the building so they can have more product on hand and, and stock up, especially on the meats. Um, I met with Executive Parisi and we expanded the hours for joining for forces for families here in Stoughton. Unfortunately, COVID came and it really limited their in-person availability. I initiated a study with the DOT to revise the park and ride study for a future rapid transit system. We're hoping that we can use some bill money to help pay for the funding. We've added vans with lifts to our taxi ride service here in Stoughton so the disabled and more people can get trips throughout the city. Thank you. Ms. Mason Bursma, Bursma, I'm sorry. Well, for 17 years serving as a community social worker in the city of Stoughton and also in Marshall, Deerfield, and Cambridge, I've become aware of community resources to help people in need access and navigate them. This is imperative for people to know what resources are available locally. It's also imperative for a city mayor and leaders to know what state and federal government assistance programs exist to help improve affordable housing, food stability, and transportation resources for our community. I was a grant writer. I helped to create new programs such as the tax assistance program with Mayor Johnson. And I also wrote grants for continuing for 15 years the Parent Connection Program, which maintains sustainability and collaborated with community partners to help increase the quality of living and work in communities. The role of the mayor or city leader is no different in addressing the needs of people representative of all incomes to maintain an adequate quality of life. I would work to create and maintain housing that is affordable for everyone, food stability resources, transportation services to exist. I was a big uh, proponent of a one-stop shop with Mayor Swadley when he first took office in 2018. I haven't seen that happen yet, but I would still work hard to see that one-stop shop so that we could have multiple resources under one roof. They have this in some prairie uh, called the Sunshine Place. They also have it in Verona called the Badger Needs Network. I also worked hard to keep the Dane County Department of Human Services on Veterans Road here for a number of years. And then after I retired, unfortunately, it got pulled out. I told Mayor Swadley about this. He didn't know this until I told him about it. So I would work hard to keep resources sustainable and valuable. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Studies show that incidents of trauma and mental health are directly connected to substance use in young people. Knowing the collective trauma our youth and community experienced over the past two years of the pandemic, what do you believe is the role of the city of Stoughton in supporting positive youth development? Well, I would collaborate with school leaders, personnel, and students to see what is needed for services in our school. One thing that I have noticed 
that we don't have after school programming in our schools. I think it's important that this be reviewed and surveyed. It is important that students and parents have those options for affordable, affordable after school programs that are offered in our district to prevent latchkey kids from happening. I would also promote lighthouse schools. What are lighthouse schools? I would model it after Sandburg Elementary in Madison, who wrote grants to provide community building by opening up schools in the evening for fun family activities after school. They had pizza, they got to shoot hoops with the principals, they got to see some of the teaching staff, and I would really promote that in our schools for community building and for that relationship building as well. I did talk to uh, Dr. Ansager, uh, who retired recently as our superintendent. He was in favor of this opportunity. I would also like to determine what the special needs are in our schools after COVID pandemic. Is there an increase of mental health issues to address for students, teachers, caregivers? Are they getting the help they needed for those, mental, for those services? Teachers are, are concerned about the size of their classroom for students. If an aid is needed and wants the respect of the administration, is that being provided and supported? Dr. Ansager was also in favor of more volunteers in our school. I'd also look at youth centers, daycare centers, service clubs. Are they being helped and supported? And I would get our alders and city leaders involved in the schools more. They could go to a Working for Kids meeting. They could read a book to a class. They could also um, go face to face to the teachers and ask them what these needs are themselves. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Swadley. The city and the community must and will continue to provide more opportunities for our youth. The Stoughton Youth Center recently was awarded a grant uh, to purchase a passenger van so we can take our programming off-site into the different uh, businesses here in Stoughton as well as in Dane County and throughout Wisconsin. And also we're going to be installing some commercial kitchen equipment. We've already had conversations with Stoughton Health as well as the Senior Center and the food pantry to work a collaboration and partnership to provide cooking lessons for our youth and as well as uh, adults as well. Um, the city has taken a leadership role in the, the Innovation Center. This was a school district initiative by Dr. Ansager. Um, and when COVID came, um, this is a project that was really going nowhere. So the city kind of stepped in and, and picked up the ball and, and we have continued to have meetings and are applying for grants in order to be able to provide uh, opportunities for not only our youth, but for the community as a whole in the areas of entrepreneurship, uh, job training, and those sorts of things. As mayor, I've participated in numerous events involving scouts and schools. Uh, we also have sponsored many of these organizations. Um, we need to have things for kids to do um, after school. Um, I agree, we, we should have more after school programs. In fact, the city did have an after school program at Kiganza School uh, when the after school provider pulled out of our district. Um, you know, earlier I heard something about the one stop shop. That's a wonderful idea. The problem is, is the city is not in a position to fund that. Um, in these other communities, those types of organizations are run community based, often uh, start out in a church or a nonprofit group and the city provides support, but the city isn't the one that actually operates these centers. So in the future, we'll continue to, to look for opportunities because mental health is a real issue. Thank you very much. That's the end of our prepared questions, and uh, we're going to take about a three-minute break right now to let uh, people stretch and to have our um, uh, sponsoring people uh, organize the questions that have come in from the audience. So. Uh, take just three minutes and we'll be we'll be back soon. Thank you.
Well, it seems that we had a little trouble with the Zoom link that was sent out being different for some people, and so we don't have as large of a Zoom audience as we thought we had. So we don't have quite as many questions having come in as we thought we might have. Um, and some of them seem to be addressing issues that may have already been addressed, but since people want to hear more, I'm going to give you then more time to address these questions. So. Um, Mr. Swadley, it's your turn okay. uh, for this to answer first. Um, what kind of prog progress and policies will you pursue to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion in Stoughton? So perhaps in this thing, looking forward more than what you've, what you've done. Okay. Well, as I mentioned earlier, so far what we've done is we've already reviewed the policies and procedures we have in place. So that's where we started. And that was something that when we had the rally after the George Floyd murder on that weekend and people downtown came together and went up and down Main Street and then they met in the city hall parking lot, I was asked to come up and speak. And you know, I basically told the crowd when I was there that I was there to listen and learn and try to understand you know, what, the, what the issues were and what my role would be. And I promised that day um, that we would review our policies and our procedures, and we did. We, we reviewed all of our hiring policies and practices. We went through our police uh, hiring and training, um, especially the excessive force. So that was kind of the starting point. Um, you know, going forward, I'm going to rely on the recommendations that come out of the task force because what they're going to do is they're going to bring us um, expert uh, testimonies from what's going on in other school districts. Uh, you know, I've been on numerous webinars and Zooms like everybody else, um, and on this particular topic, there is really no silver bullet. At the end of the day, people just need to learn to trust. People just need to learn to treat each other with respect and dignity, and unfortunately, that doesn't happen. And part of the education process that I think people need to understand is if you witness a situation where people are treated poorly, how to handle that situation. And people are uncomfortable being put in that situation and often they don't know how to respond to the person that might be making a statement or a gesture and not treating people with respect. So I think there's going to be a huge educational piece to this component and I'm really excited to see what the uh, task force comes up with. Thank you. Ms. Mason Borsma. Yes, I would also agree that our ordinances need to be looked at. We need to really focus on, as I mentioned before, curriculum in our schools, curriculum in our libraries, to make sure we promote fairness, equity, and validation for all cultures. Again, I would work hard to see if we can also create growth in our community to provide housing, it all is in a package deal, more student population, and also to have more multicultural events in our town. I can say this tonight, and I, I thought about it. I had a woman on the street, and I was doing some campaign work, and she said to me, you know, why is the Norwegian flag here every day? And I said, well, you know, we are a Norwegian uh, heritage community. And she said, well, I understand that. But how do other cultures feel about seeing a Norwegian flag every day? So should we not have flags from other countries represented? And I stopped and I thought about that. And I think our city should address that, frankly. Because I do think if we promote fairness, equality of all cultures, we should show that as well. So I would work on some of the things that I hadn't thought of until it was pointed out to me, and that's what I think discussion leads. If we connect with each other and we talk about concerns with each other that we have personally, professionally, whatever it is in all walks of life, we should share those discussions together, work out some kind of compromise so that we can respect each other. Thank you. And. Uh, Sticking somewhat to the same topic, um, what will you do specifically regarding the racial issues in our school district? Yeah. Uh, it is to you. Yes, oh, I'm that's sorry. Me. I'm sorry. 
what will I do? I would talk about it regarding those issues. I would also look and see what those issues stem from. Is it a particular incident? Is it a particular staff person? Um, is it a particular student that is creating racial issues in that school setting? And then I would uh, try to work it out as fairly equitably as possible. But I would look at all sides, and I would determine what needs to be done in terms of prevention. I think prevention is key for, for any issue, but also racial issues. And I would also look and see how it impacts the other students in, in the school setting. And maybe we would talk about it as a focus group. Maybe we would share discussions in, together. Because I do think it takes people to work on issues like that. I have to say I was disappointed that currently in our present school system, we removed the community resource officer in our Stoughton school system after the George Floyd incident. I advocated strongly to get a community resource officer in our school system, and we were able to do that. But then after that incident, that person was removed. And I, would, I did talk to Chief Leck, and he would promote that again. I do think that relationship building is key. I think that officer did have a presence in the school. And again, the relationship building, knowing that school, knowing those students, building that relationship when there aren't quote unquote issues is key to anything. Thank you. Mr. Swadley. Uh, certainly the racial issues in the school district have been highlighted recently. Um, you know, it's not really the city's position to tell the school district how to run, you know, their operation there, but we should be there to support their efforts. And that's what I try to do as mayor. We had a conversation with um, President Sullivan the other day about the incident. Um, you know, I have mixed feelings about the school resource officer. I advocated hard to, to, to have that position. I still think that position, if structured properly, can be... Uh, be an asset to the school district. They feel differently. I support their, their decision on that. And I know that they're trying to implement, implement other strategies to address the racial issue there. Um, I think, you know, part of it is education, not only the students, but the parents. I mean, this stuff has been going on for a long time. We've all witnessed it even, you know, when we were in school way back when. And unfortunately, it still rears its ugly head. Um, you know, the city you know, we, we put in a bully ordinance. We've tried to do things like that. Um, but it's a tool that's very rarely utilized because people don't want to report things because sometimes that just makes it worse. So, you know, working together with the school district and supporting their efforts, I think, is the, is the, is the role of, you know, of the city. And certainly this is a community problem and anything that we can do to help support uh, the changes that they feel need to be made in order to address this issue um, I'll be right there, you know, with them. Thank you. What do you think about resettlement of displaced refugees in Stoughton? What would you do as mayor to support the resettlement efforts? Well, I can tell you what I've already done. I was contacted um, about the resettlement, and really they were looking for some space to store furniture that might be donated uh, for the resettlement efforts. And we were able to find and secure uh, a place in the Senior Center Annex to, to store some furniture in anticipation of families coming to Stoughton. So I certainly, you know, support resettlement efforts. The big challenge is going to be, you know, the, the availability of the housing. We really have struggles um, even with, with people that we currently have in Stoughton finding affordable housing for them. Um, we have another group that's been working to try to help people that you know, are in crisis that are, you know, homeless by the definition of doubling up, um, you know, with friends or family um, because there's just not simply enough housing available or they can't afford it. So it's a real struggle already, um, you know, bringing uh, resettlement of, of some refugees here would be a great thing to add to our diversity, to our community, but we have to make sure that we have the support in place in order to help these individuals or families and support would be the housing would be the number one 
you know, there could potentially be language barriers. We need to be able to provide them support so they can find a job, so they can support themselves while they're living here and hopefully have a great way to improve their quality of life in a safe environment. Thank you. Well, I'm on the subcommittee of the Stoughton Resettlement Assistance Program, so I'm totally excited about this. And I was able to find a, a, a duplex for uh, refugees for the future. Recently, I found that a few weeks ago. So the subcommittee is working together. It's about 10 to 15 people. And we recruited some uh, community members, not just from Stoughton, but the village of Oregon as well, to be on the committee to help with housing. We found a, a place, which we're excited about. We're also coordinating this with the Lutheran Social Services. They're directing us on looking for recruitment of volunteers, making sure that we have background checks, making sure that we know resources in our town for employment, for transportation, just for settling in and learning language, um, because there might be a language barrier, but we can do it. So I am totally excited about um, having them settle, yeah, any refugees settle in the city of Stoughton. If we want to talk about diversity and inclusion, let's show what we can do in this town. So I would be totally for it. Thank you. All right, next. What process would you uh, follow to create city budgets that reflect limitations imposed by the state, surging inflation, and expanding local needs? I think it's real important, again, in my narrative a while ago, to know what state, federal, and local government assistance programs are. Awareness is everything. And I would keep my ears open, my eyes open, and depend on city leaders as well to look at those budgets and to see where we can go for getting more money to, to, to secure some of the issues that we've talked about tonight. Affordable housing, development, school growth is totally needed in our community. And also even revitalization of downtown. I was a grant writer for the county. I'm now a grant writer for nonprofit organizations to keep them sustainable in our Stoughton area. And so I'm used to writing grants and looking what's available. So grant money is out there. It's just knowing how to go for it, look for it, to sustain um, and complement our budget. I am also fiscally responsible, and I don't um, go off and try to spend money that it shouldn't be spent. But I look at areas where I think we can secure more money for more quality services. Thank you. Um, well, this is a great question, and really the city finances is a really a, a difficult challenge because of the state imposed uh, spending caps. Um, you, know, at, you know, talking about grants and assistance, we do all that. So, you know, to sit here and, and say, oh, this is what we need to do, that's already being done. In fact, uh, we did write some grants, um, and some of them, you know, were approved and some of them weren't. Um, examples of that are in the area of um, energy assistance in the area of transportation, uh, road improvements, and in the white, the Whitewater Park. My opponent, she discouraged the Park and Recreation Committee from writing additional grants to bring in a project that's going to clean up the river and provide opportunities for people to want to come and consider Stoughton their home. So having grant opportunities are wonderful and we already do that we have expertise on city staff and we do this all the time um, understanding how the net new construction formula works how school finance works and as a business owner how finance in general works doing budgets making payroll and making difficult decisions putting that all together that's the important you know position about being mayor is working with your city staff understanding the process to have a transparent way to, to have priorities to address the needs of the city. And that's what we've been doing um, under my leadership in the last four years. We've been working to keep our employees paid at a fair level with restrictions. We've been using the, the growth money that we receive in order to be able to 
staff additional positions, uh, most recently in the IT and making our deputy clerk a full-time position. We've done restructuring in order to accommodate that. So, you know, writing grants is wonderful, but you're not going to balance your budget, budget doing that. Thank you. All right, the last question, or do we have one more? Okay, the last question for the night. Um, you'll uh, answer this one first, Mr. Swadley. Addressing growth. Ideas for a year-round aquatic center. We can't charge the public for use of the Whitewater Park. Can we charge for an aquatic center? So the aquatic center, um, there's a couple different types. There's an outdoor and there's a, a year-round. An outdoor aquatic center, um, they have one in Wisconsin Rapids. I met with the mayor over the holidays and talked about their aquatic center. And that one cost them $12 million. They thought they were going to be able to to write grants and raise money to pay for it. And unfortunately, they are only able to raise $2 million worth of grants. So the taxpayers are paying $10 million toward the aquatic center um, in Wisconsin Rapids, which is more than we paid for our new public works garage, which provides efficiencies uh, for our city services. Um, and year-round aquatic center, which would be similar to the high school swimming area or bigger, you're talking Kenosha County built 125 to $30 million. Those projects are usually built by clubs like the Boys and Girls Club, the YMCA, or the school district. The advantage of having the school district over the city uh, build it is the school district in their funding has what they call a Fund 80, so they can offset some of the operational costs using taxpayers' money outside of their spending limits through the Fund 80. The city can't do that. We don't have that tool available for us. One of the things this group of developers and business owners I talked about earlier are doing are looking at, you know, how can we get more amenities to Stoughton? The water park is one that we're going to have, and it's going to cost us less than $2 million. There is an opportunity, if we choose, to have a shuttle service, which could provide revenue to the city. That's one of the areas that would have to be determined by the city council at a later date. But this group that's working on the amenities, we are looking at options like the aquatic center or uh, sporting complexes and other things as a way to attract people to come to Stoughton, similar to the splash pad where that neighborhood, having that there, help the developer be able to sell houses and have a better neighborhood uh, park system. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to talk about the, the pros and cons of both the aquatic center and the water park, or the whitewater park. Um, the whitewater park, we cannot charge people for using it because it's on a waterway. So there would be no fee charged for people to do this. It would be maybe, maybe four months out of the year. And so the city cannot make any revenue except for renting canoes, renting kayaks, concessions, etc. My concern, again, is climate change. How much would it cost our city? I've asked a lot of the business owners, are you going to make a lot of money off of this? Um, lot, some of them didn't know it was even being planned. So my concern is how much are we going to make from this white water park? And again, I mentioned to you what the Manchester, Iowa Whitewater Park looked in July of 2021. There were five cars there when we were there about an hour and a half. That was it. So I'd like to talk about the aquatic center. And I've looked at the other aquatic centers in nearby towns, in Whitewater, uh, Fort Atkinson, indoor, outdoor aquatic centers. I've done a lot of work uh, researching this. And I've modeled what I'd like to see for Stoughton from the Gladstone, Missouri. It's called a community center, but it's an aquatic center. Open 365 days of the year. It's got a water therapy pool. It's also got um, a competitive 25-yard swimming pool. It's got an event. It's an event for people. And they get a lot of their money from events. They also can charge for this. There's memberships to this aquatic center. The good part is that it's also leased by the North Kansas Missouri School. So every third grader is guaranteed to learn how to swim for free. And that's a big plus. So that's what I would recommend. Thank you very much. That seems to be all the questions that we have for tonight. So uh, it's time for our closing statements. And Mr. Swadley, we'll begin with you. Two minutes. 
All right. Once again, I would like to thank the League of Women Voters, the Stoughton Courier Hub, Sustainable Stoughton, the Stoughton Wellness Coalition, and my opponent uh, for being here tonight. And for those of you in the audience and watching on Zoom, thank you for being here. Uh, tonight you had the opportunity to hear the successes in the area of open and transparent government, running efficient city services, fiscally responsible budgets, smart and strategic growth, and collaborated solutions. These principles are relevant when promoting Stoughton as a place for young families to live and work and businesses to operate here. Ensuring smart and strategic growth that support our schools, data and fact-based decision making, creating a sustainable future, making Stoughton a more welcoming community, developing strategies to address substance abuse, trauma and mental health will remain pri priorities in my next term. I will do this by continuing to earn the trust and respect of the city staff, city council, and our community. Without this, nothing will happen. I hope I answered all of your questions clearly and I will be happy to meet with you and discuss in more detail. Look for more information at your doorstep, in the mail, and at Facebook, Tim Swadley for Mayor. I believe my professional and government experience clearly separates myself from my opponent. I'm a proven commodity. There is much more to accomplish, and I'm motivated to continue to give back to the community and take the experience of running the city during the pandemic to a new level. Having an experienced mayor, business owner with relevant professional experience is important when managing the city, building relationships, and promoting positive change. I'm happy I've had the opportunity tonight to share my accomplishments in my first term now. We'll build on that success in the next four years. I'd appreciate your vote on April 5th, and I'd be honored to continue as your mayor the next four years. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Mason Borsma, your concluding statement. I was also thank you and the sponsors tonight, my opponent, uh, for being here and to listening to these issues for our city that are important. I want to close with this. One main factor of my campaign is to aim for government authenticity and accountability. I have encountered disappointments securing information for my campaign. For example, how much do city leaders make for salary? I had to file an open record form to get this information. I got the same information over the counter from neighboring Oregon. How much is the projected cost of the Stoughton Dam removal whitewater build? City has not disclosed that. Have any of the American Rescue Plan funds been dispersed? I asked Mayor Swally in an email. He said to look it up in the city records. I couldn't find it. Recent campaign mailings by my opponent have been misleading, such as the mill rate was reduced, but he did not mention that the property taxes had increased. Has this been your experience as well, getting straight facts or answers from our city government? I will promote alders, if I am mayor, to meet their constituents in planful meetings to get to know each other and to discuss issues. Many residents do not know who their alders are and how to reach them. For public view, I will post minutes of city council meetings in the front, those minutes of city hall, an estimated cost of projects and what taxpayers will pay. More public meetings will be held for people to voice their opinions. Mayor Swadley told me he would be looking at holding a public meeting in April 2021 on the Stoughton Dam removal Whitewater Park build. It is March of 2022. I'm still waiting. Don't forget to vote on April 5th, Election Day. Please visit my website, SharonForStoughton.com, Facebook, and Instagram. I will have videos posted soon on the social media sites that will elaborate on these issues. And thank you for your attendance tonight. And now you may applaud if you so choose. <laughs> Thank you. I would also like to thank the candidates, Sharon Mason Borsma and Tim Swadley, our timekeeper, Deb Piper, the sponsoring organization, Sustainable Stoughton, the Stoughton Wellness Coalition, and the Stoughton Career Hub. Thanks also to WSTO for recording and broadcasting the forum. Um, if you uh, know someone who wasn't able to participate tonight, uh, please know that this is, will be available on WSTO.TV on demand and on the YouTube channel for WSTO as well. Um, since we have a little time, I'm going to put in a little plug for the League of Women Voters of Dane County. Our 
um, a publication called Candidates Answers is going to be um, in the Wisconsin State Journal as an insert on this Wednesday. So if you subscribe or if you pick one up at the pay at the uh, your local store, um, look for that. Don't throw it out with the ads. Um, and uh, it will also be posted on our website and on the National League uh, Vote 411 website, uh, which allows you to put in an address and see your specific um, candidates that will be on your ballot for your ward. And remember, because of redistricting, um, there may have been changes to wards. I don't know what has happened in, in Stoughton. So you please check on myvote.wi.gov to be sure that you know where your polling place is for this election. Mm. So thank you to the audience for wanting to be informed voters. And uh, please remember to vote on or before the spring election on April 5th, Tuesday, on behalf of the League of Women Voters of Dane County. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Thank you.